The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. <laughs> Effie? Effie? Eff? Oh. I waited. Say what you have to say and I'll go. You've been through a tough time, sweetheart. Well, you didn't make it any easier. You think it was a cakewalk for me? You think my nerves are made of rubber? You have no nerves. You're just a cold, callous Shut old up. detective. You're going to listen to me. You're going to sit still, not talk, and listen. I when I've finished, you can say goodnight or goodbye. First, you're going to listen to me. You remember how it started? Yesterday evening, when you told me it was your mother's birthday, you were giving a party, you said, and you wanted me to come? I tried to beg off, being no social butterfly, but Mom would be hurt, you said. And so the next thing I knew, there I was at your house, surrounded by two dozen strangers, ten gallons of lemonade, and your mother. I've been wanting to have a talk with you, Mr. Spade, about Effie. I can't think of a nicer subject, Mrs. Perrine. Yeah. <laughs> Effie is just so devoted to you, Mr. Spade. Yeah, well, uh, I, uh, Mother. I'm very devoted to Effie, too, Mother. Mrs. Crane. Uh, what I mean is Mother, that... I... I think we should do something. Party's dying on its feet. Oh, you want me to spike the lemonade, Effie? It just so happens that I have here in my pocket a bottle of... Uh... I have a wonderful idea. It makes the party one big, happy family. You just wait and see now. Quiet! Quiet, everybody! What's she up to? Some kind of game, probably. Mother's great on games. That's all I need. Your attention, please. Oh, oh, excuse me. There's Miss Brent going now. Miss Brent? Oh, Miss Brent? Yeah, Mrs. Green. Won't you join the party? I'd love to, but I have an appointment. Oh, what a shame. Oh, do stay. Thank you. Some other time. Oh, Lola's so nice. She rents the sitting room upstairs. I wish she could have stayed. Well, but I I'll explain the game now. Oh, Mrs. Green, I think I'll stay after all. Oh, how nice. Oh, you brought a gentleman friend. Yeah. Yeah, he... This is Marty. Mikey? Oh, but Mikey, I'd like to... Lola sat down and crossed her legs at me. On her left knee, where I would have preferred to see a dimple, I saw a tattoo mark. Her gentleman friend, Marty, was a small, stocky guy, all teeth and New York tie. He uh, shook hands all around, and it felt like the paw of a stale stiff. And this is Mr. Spade. He's a private detective that he works for. Lola's from Kansas City, Mr. Spade. Oh? She's waiting for her husband to return from service overseas. I'm glad he's coming home safely. Where's he stationed? Uh, he, Japan. Yeah, he's... Now, quiet, everybody, quiet. We're going to play charade. Oh, it's very simple. Now, you see, I'm the captain of Team A. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Burson, oh, he's so clever. He can be captain of Team D. Now, dears, quiet, everybody. Now, we'll both select the members of our team, and then um, each of you will uh, write something on a slip of paper. Uh, we'll write a quotation or a phrase, you know, the title of a song, whatever you like. Doesn't matter. Just something interesting and clever. Then I think... Yes, yes, I think that's right. You act out what you've written all in Panama. No words can be used, although sounds are permissible. Dear, you must listen to me or we can't play the game. Now, you can't play unless you know how. Oh. And then your team must guess what is written on the paper, and you act it out. Now, any questions? How many words can we play? Oh, any amount of words. Oh, that's no, not, not over ten, though. Ten. Too long, yes. Now, everybody Teams ready? were chosen. I wound up on now, Mrs. Perrine's Team A. The slips of paper were handed out to the guests. I wrote down, quote, the raven nevermore. So I'd have to make like a raven. While everybody was getting settled, uh, Lola Brent came up to me. She pushed a slip of paper into my hand. This is your charade, Mr. Spade. Oh, but I got Isn't one. Isn't this fun? Please, don't lose the charade I gave you. And with that, she lost herself in the crowd. I pushed the paper she handed me into my pocket without looking at it. Her gentleman friend, Marty, the little character with a New York tie, was out in the center of the floor quack, acting quack, his charade. Quack, 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 he flapped his arms quack, up and down, quacked twice, and rolled over on his back. Nobody got it, so he did it again. Quack, 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 quack. Oh. Wait a minute, Doc. Dead duck! Dead duck! Oh, that's dead duck! Oh, isn't that wonderful? Now, Team A scores a win there. Let's go on, please. Well, sir, uh, 
Mr. Dead Duck, we guessed you. But will you please get up now and we'll go on to the... <gasps> oh! Sam! Sam, he's dead! And he certainly was. A deader duck I'd never seen. I bent to him and his lips were turning blue. Somebody had spiked his last drink with a jigger of poison. One hour later, Dundee and the homicide boys, including the medic, had taken a sip downtown. No one could identify him. Lola Brent had brought him to the party, but she'd taken a powder. You and Mom were kind of shaky, so I decided to spend the night on the sofa in the living room. I only used up about three hours of it when I heard the front door open. I figured it was Lola. I got to my feet, crossed to the hall, and found myself staring into the biggest 45 I ever saw. Where's the duck? Who? He wants to know who, Poby. Look, we don't want no trouble. You're protecting this duke. Okay. All we want is the duck. Try Walt Disney. I should have known they had no sense of humor. The butt of the gun caught me behind the left ear. That's where it usually catches me. I don't know how much more sleep I packed away until I felt you shaking me. Sam! Sam! Huh? What, Effie? They took Mom. Huh? Those gunmen, they took Mom. Well, what happened? They came into our bedroom. Yeah? They hit me. What? Right here. Yeah? And then they grabbed Mama. They wanted the duck. Huh? Sam, what were they saying? And they took Mom out with them. I'll call the police. Effie, no, no. But they've got Mom. Oh, for heaven's sake, Sam, they took my mother with them. No, no, we can't call the police, Effie, not yet. They, they want something. They want the duck. I think <laughs> Mom has it. Well, she's safe for a while, but if we call the police, oh, she's... Oh, Sam, Sam, what shall we do? What shall we do? Keep our fingers crossed and play the rest of the caper by ear. <laughs> So you promised that you wouldn't call the police until I gave you the nod. I went out to buzz the town. I figured it was an out-of-state mob, probably New York. The Gunzels were after the duck. Well, that made no sense. They thought I was the muscle for the juke joint. I hustled over to Jenny the juke. If she didn't know the score, nobody would. Her place was dark. And finally, she opened up and led me into the rear. When I mentioned the duck, she shut down tighter than a clam in December. It's blisters, Sam. Blisters, I tell you. This ain't only the local law. This is the feds. Go away, Sam. My joint ain't juking for the duration. Listen, Jenny, there's an out-of-state mob. They put the arm on my secretary's mother. She don't know the time of day. They pulled the wrong feather. I don't hear a word you say, Sam. They're mixed up in the juke joint grip. You, you know who they are. Where's the duck, Jenny? Sam, you're winging in the breeze, Now, Sam. give me a rundown, Jenny, or I'll tear your ears off. I want that old woman back safe. You can't muscle me, Sam. You know why? Because you'll tear my ears off, and that's where you'll stop. <laughs> that's where they begin. Okay, Jenny, okay. One thing. Can you get word to them? Uh, maybe. Well, you try. Maybe. Tell them I've got the duck. I'll deal for the old woman. I'll try. Go back to your office. If I can throw a little weight, you'll get a call. If I can't, you can come back for my ears. And when I got back to the office, I had you on my hands. And that was no rest cure. But I can't just sit here. Do something. We've got to sit and wait. Maybe they're killing her. Maybe... Oh, Sam, please, call the police. No, we got to sweat it out. I can't. I can't go on like this. Who sent you? Jenny the Duke. What's your name? I'm Dennis O'Rourke. I'm here to talk about the duck. Good enough. Come into my office. Effie, you wait out here. But Sam... Wait here, I said. Sit down. Thank you kindly. I'm a lawyer, Mr. Spade. I'm here to represent my client. What's his name? John Doe. Mm-hmm. Jane Doe's big brother, huh? My client has been led to believe that you are prepared to uh, produce the duck. Is that correct? More or less. What's it worth to your client? My client is willing to trade the old woman for the duck. <laughs> you go back and tell your client I'm a big boy now. Well, I, uh, I don't understand, Mr. Spade. This town is loaded with old women. All I have to do is walk up and down Market Street, but there's only one duck. Yeah, there must be a misunderstanding. And well, let me put you straight. I've got the duck. Where? Oh, that'll be cute. Your client wants the duck. Okay. For 50 G. $50,000, is it? Things are high all over. Yeah, but the old woman is uh, Mrs. Perrine. Aren't you interested? Now, listen, you can do whatever you like about the old woman. So you got an old woman. Get rid of her however you want. That's your source. What's important is that you want the duck. I want 50 grand. Do we play? Well, no, I... Wait. Oh, 
Effie. I thought we had an audience the other side of the door. Uh, what were you... Shut up. Save it, Effie. This is business. Easiest money of the season. Well, if you're ready to talk business, we'll go and talk to my client, Mr. Spade. Now. Then let's go. Hey, what I heard you say. You did... Oh, Sam! You've known me a long time, Effie. But maybe you don't know me. The United States Armed Forces Radio Service is presenting the weekly adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. The car that drove us down the peninsula was brand new. I could tell by the way the upholstery smelled and the careful way the driver handled it. O'Rourke, the lawyer, sat up front and I sat in the back, squeezed between two gunners. The gun muzzle stuck into my ribs told me all I needed to know about them. The rest of it I had to guess at. Time is hard to judge when you're blindfolded, but there's only one main road out of San Francisco by land. And I know the towns and stops along it fairly well. About 20 miles out of the city, the car turned off the main highway onto a gravel road. Five minutes later, the blindfold came off. The fog was so thick, I still couldn't see much. The gunners pushed me ahead of them into a shack that looked like a summer vacation cottage with a sign over the door that said, Buy the weed. A sallow, mean-looking little man with a heavily scarred face met us at the door. On his right arm, just above the wrist, was tattooed a small picture of a mallard duck. He glared at me and then at O'Rourke. How come? I told you don't come back without her. Heaven be my witness that he I did my utmost. Huh? It seems that he that Mr. Spade is interested in money. What money? Did you tell him we got the old lady? I did, sir. I am afraid we've misjudged Mr. Spade. In short, that he, Mr. Spade, is not in the least altruistic. What does he want? Uh, uh, you had better tell him, Mr. Spade. Fifty thousand now, another fifty G's when I deliver the duck. A hundred G's is a lot of cash. You can afford it. Bugsy, bring in the old lady. Okay. I do wish that you would bring in Mr. Morton. Sam, well, it's high time. Do you know these men? This was a cute trick, Ducky, but it's going to cost you. The lady spoke to you, Spade. I told you it's going to cost you letting her see me here. The longer she stands here staring at me, the more it's going to cost you. Sam, what is it? If I've done anything, you make you angry. Get her out of here! But Mr. Morton said you were going to call for me, Sam. I, I don't understand. There, there, no matter. Don't. Uh, come along now. Don't you worry about it. I want to go home. Well, of course. I really want to go home. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Spade. You've broken that old lady's heart. Stop drooling. What your talks on the eye ain't any sweet old lady. I don't have to use words when I talk to you, Ducky. You won't do anything to me because I got something you need. Okay, a hundred G's paid the way you said. Price has gone up. Huh? Kidnapping's a federal rap. I'm not taking any part of it. She don't know she was snatched. We told her we are from the DA's office. Keeping her on ice as a witness. You'll find out different. I don't plan on settling down here. Oh, that's fine, but I have to go on living in this town with that old hen alive and clucking. It won't be easy. You mean you want we should knock off that sweet old lady? You're a little slow, Ducky, but you'll get there. I've met some lousy low-down heels in my day, but you're the lousiest low... Oh, go on. Go on, I can take more of it at these prices. We ain't doing your dirty laundry, see? And it's no dice. My price is a hundred grand. What if I say no? Then I turn over the duck to the federal boys. In that case, I don't care whether the old lady stays alive or not, because I'll be playing their game. Either you're in or you're out. Now get over, Morton. When you decide, you know where to reach me. Yeah. We'll know where to reach you. <laughs> They drove me back to town blindfolded, and when they let me out of the car, all I could see, even without the blindfold, was the corner of Post and Carney. When a streetcar came along, I tossed the coin with it to get on it, I lie down on the tracks and let it run over me. Came up head, so I uh, tossed it again, and I got on instead. I fished in my pocket for a slug and came up with a folded slip of paper. It was the one Lola had handed me at Mr. Perrine's birthday party when they were passing out the parts for that screwy charades game. I unfolded it and glanced at it. I read it over very carefully. The writing was hard to make out, but what I could read of it said, Help me. That man Marty has followed me here to kill me. If I get out of here alive, Maxie's Arcade. 
I have a hundred dollars. I got off at Columbus and walked up to the international settlement where Maxie's Arcade does business. It's what they used to call a penny arcade before inflation set in. I dropped a nickel in a fortune-telling machine. Worried? Perplexed? Know thyself and your problems will vanish. A card came out that said, you're of a naturally deceitful and secretive character. Disloyalty brings its own punishment. It's never too late to mend. I tore up the card, kicked the machine, and that's when I saw it. A narrow little booth muffled in drapes, and the sign over it said, Salty Hawkins, tattoo artist. The card pinned to the curtain showed some typical tattoo designs, anchors, mermaids, fancy initials, but one had a hand-drawn picture pasted over it. It was a mallard duck, the same as the tattoo mark I'd noticed on Ducky Morden's wrist. I pulled the curtain aside and went in. Yes, sir, what can I do for you, mate? What do you know about the duck? All in your jib, mate. There's no freshwater birds here about. How about the new one you just put up in your cart outside? Oh, that one, eh? Now, whereabouts? On the arm? Two, three colour jobs. On a leg. Whereabouts? Her left knee. Well, that's right, mate. It was on her knee. Did she have you remove it for her? Right, guess that time, mate. Know why? Look, mate. If I did, I wouldn't be telling strangers about the secret. All right, where is she? Take it easy, mate. I haven't got time to take it easy, mate. Talk. Sure, a bar temper, didn't you? Come on, come on. I was going to tell you anyhow. She says to me, she says if a man comes All right, shut up. Where is she? Right in the back room, mate. Spade, open up. Hello, Lola. Finally worked out your charade. Come on in, quick. Will you follow it here? I wouldn't have come if I had been. How much do you know? They want you a hundred thousand bucks worth. You tell me why. You've seen Ducky Mordant? Yeah. Didn't he tell you? I want to hear it from you. Don't believe anything he says. Morning year and I didn't even give me the time of day. He says he wants me back that way. He's a liar. How does he want you back? With rigid mortis, he wants me back. I'm taking an awful chance opening up to you like this. Let him catch me. They'd only kill me. Humane. You was to let the DA people get at me. Ducky's mob would lay for me then if it took them years. And... Oh, gee, you don't know, Sam. They... They torture girls. What that mob would do to me if I had to testify against okay, him. Okay, I take your word for that. Who are these DA people you're talking about? You never heard of Ducky Morton before? I heard his name. I thought he was knocked over when they had the big racket busting show in New York years ago. Yeah, I guess a lot of people thought that. It wasn't healthy to mention Ducky's name. What was the racket? Juke joints. Giving Mickeys to servicemen, rolling them. That's why the feds are helping the DA's office. They arrested hundreds of girls and held them as material witnesses. Only they wanted me most of all. I broke the joints, you see, and... And then I was Ducky's girlfriend during the duration. Well, I'd think you'd be only too happy to tell what you know about him in court. Oh, gee, I would if I did, but you don't know. The DA's office say they'll give a girl protection, but how can they? What are you doing in San Francisco? Running away. Had my ticket on a boat. I was going to Honolulu. But they was watching the boats. So then I found this room out in Oakland. Mrs. Preen was real nice to me. I never thought they'd find me there. And then Marty showed up. Honestly, it was just a Mickey I put in his drink. Just like we used in the joints, I never knew it'd kill him. <laughs> You're a brave kid, Lola. Now, look, Ducky offered me a hundred grand to deliver you. Would you take a chance on me fighting it out with him for half of that? For fifty grand? Brother, where are we meeting him? O'Rourke's car was parked outside my apartment building where I had a hunch it would be. The two Ghanas picked us up at the door, unloaded my hardware, and marched us up the stairs. Ducky opened the door of my listen, apartment Ducky. and waved us inside. Listen, honey, you Ducky, go the plant outside, you two. Ducky, listen to me. Uh, sit down. You too, Lola. Ducky, I swear I never said a word. I'd never talk, Ducky, even if they chopped my head off. We'll take up your suggestion later. I got a conference on with Mr. Spade here. You bring the money? Don't crowd me. There's that other matter. The old lady. How about the old lady? I keep my word, Spade. You delivered the duck. Okay. The way Jenny gave it out to O'Rourke was the old lady for the duck. But you ain't got no ethics. You see, you figured me wrong. I don't kill old ladies. You're gonna kill the duck. I ain't no old lady. No, you ain't. And you ain't gonna get any older. And neither are you, Spade. He wasn't kidding. He really meant to knock me over. And the gun he was gonna do it with got ready to speak its piece. I'd made my play too strong. The way this type of gunsel thinks is simple, and I'd guessed it right. If you pressure them, they go the other way by instinct. But 
But I hadn't figured was that this killer had a heart of lettuce. He was going to cut me down to protect your mother from me. How do you like that? And I couldn't change my play now. The wheel was already spinning, and so was my head. I tried to brace myself and waited for the blast. Every little movement has a... Oh! Oh, dear, I dropped the tray. This is Perrine. What are you doing here? I was just making some coffee for the boys. Oh, dear, I've broken your cups. That's okay, Mother. We'll take care of it. Bugsy, pick it up. Pick it up, sure, sure. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bugsy. Well, I'm so glad you got my message, Sam. Didn't Effie come with you? Uh, yeah. I mean, no. I, I, oh, I, I mean... wanted to surprise you both together. I hope you don't mind my taking over the kitchen. It was so late and the boys were getting hungry, so I... Offered to make them coffee and hot cakes. Well, that was very nice of you. Uh, Mr. Morden, uh, put that pistol down for a moment and, and help me move this table up into the room. Huh? Oh, oh, sure, Mother. Thank you. Oh, we've had such a good time. I've never been up so late in my life. Mr. Bugsy and I played a game called Blackjack, and I won $50. <laughs> wait till Effie hears about that. Yeah, wait till she hears. I suppose Effie will come with Mr. Bundy. Bundy? Oh, yes. I remember that Effie said you and she are often down at his office at police headquarters late at night. So I phoned there. Uh, and... Mother. Yes, Mr. Morton? Did you say you phoned police headquarters? Oh, yes. That's where Mr. Bundy works. Mother, what did you tell Mr. Bundy? Well, just that you and the boys were here and that we were about to have some coffee. And he said he'd just love to come up and join us and... I said, do, and he said he would, with some of his boys. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? <laughs> no, no, Mom, not at all. <laughs> all right, boy, crash it. Oh, I believe that's Mr. Bundy now. <laughs> when the smoke cleared away, Ducky Morton and his hoods were playing dead duck for keeps in my living room rug. That rug just came back from the cleaners, too. Dundee and the boys from Homicide took Lola Brent away with him. After it was all cleaned up, I found your mother out in the kitchen. Well, Sam, I just made another pot of coffee. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Mom. It's okay. It's all over now. I know. I know. I, I've been holding this back. Oh, Sam, I, I've never been so frightened in all my life. How does Effie stand it? You played it good, Mom. You played it real good. Did I? Was I as brave as Effie? Braver. And not only that, you got more brains. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.